Roman, can you hear me? Yeah. We'll start. Romana, can you hear me? Yes, sir. I can hear you, sir. Okay. Good morning, uh, ladies and gentlemen. If you are in Indian Indian zone time zone, uh, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. Uh, I'm Bela Shanai. I'm the managing editor of Micro Asia. Uh, here we have Dr. Rohit Sharma with me, who is the managing editor of Micro India, and we have doc, uh, Dr. Roman Milde, who is uh, representing Micro Asia events team. Uh, welcome to the international online seminar on Meran fungi. Um, thank you for joining in. Uh, the idea behind uh, uh, this uh, seminar to probably to convey the interesting facts about marine fungi, highlight the interesting works that are going on in India and other parts of the world, especially Philippines and Mexico. Uh, we are going to have nine interesting lectures by the eminent experts in the field of marine mycology. The first lecture will be by Professor Venkatesh Sarvam from uh, Pondicherry University, India. He will also give an overview of the today's uh, event. Uh, before that, I request Dr. Rohit Sharma to introduce Professor Venkatesh Sarvam to this audience. Over to you, Dr. Rohit Sharma. Thank you, Dr. Shinoy. Uh, a warm welcome to everyone. Uh, Dr. Uh, today's uh, our speaker, Dr. V. Sharma, is a professor at Department of Biotechnology, at School of Sciences, Pondicherry. Uh, earlier, Dr. V. V. Sharma has uh, done his studies from RKM Vivekanand College, Chennai, and uh, completed his PhD on uh, biodiversity and ecology of marine fungi from University of Madras. He uh, has done his postdoctoral work from uh, National Institute of Oceanography, Goa. And he also accomplished his second postdoctoral studies uh, with uh, Dr. K.D. Hyde from University of uh, Hong Kong. And after his return to India, he had uh, briefly worked at Biocon India Limited and also worked as a senior scientist at Sri A.M.M. Murugappa Chetia Research Center, Chennai. Uh, under his supervision, around 11 PhDs have been awarded or uh, under pursuing. Uh, he has been elected as the Fellow of Mycological Society of India. He has successfully completed uh, research projects uh, with MOES and SERB. And he has more than 144 publications and 102 research articles to his credit. Uh, uh, we welcome you, Dr. Sarma, for the today's uh, event. And uh, over to you. you please kindly, uh, you can present your uh, talk. Yeah. Thank you, Dr. Rohit Sharma, and also Dr. Damodar Shinai for uh, inviting me to deliver this lecture. Uh, it is a well-conserved uh, uh, international seminar on uh, marine fungi. Uh, you know, the fungi are uh, normally neglected in ecological sciences. If you take microbiology, it is more often uh, synonymous with uh, bacteria. And if you take uh, plant sciences, uh, the fungi have been separated. And nowadays, based on molecular sciences, they are more in uh, animal sciences. Now, we have uh, three-fourths of the ocean with uh, water, uh, means, uh, and uh, uh, we know that more than one and a half lakh uh, fungi are there, uh, 150,000 fungi are known. But uh, yeah, as far as uh, marine environment is concerned, the number of fungi known from marine environment are minuscule. Uh, there are a number of reasons. The, First one is the highly diluted form of water in the oceanic system without a proper anchorage or support or available of uh, the carbohydrates. These are the important things. So we have uh, uh, devised or designed this uh, seminar sometime back uh, uh, upon a discussion with uh, Dr. <coughs> Shanai. And uh, we have uh, today uh, tried to cover as many aspects of uh, this uh, seminar on different aspects. Uh, although I will be talking about morphology, um, and uh, we are uh, being uh, supported by uh, Dr. Uh, Narsimha Thakur, 
a good friend of mine. Uh, I know him from 1998 from uh, Goa. He's going to talk about bioprospecting of marine fungi because uh, the uh, marine fungi, they have a lot of uh, prospects uh, as far as the secondary metabolites are concerned. And then the Professor Sridhar from West Coast of India has been working a lot for more than 25 years uh, on uh, more than 30 years uh, on marine fungi. And uh, he's going to uh, uh, um, cover a lot of ecology of the marine fungi also. And uh, my uh, uh, teacher, uh, Professor T. S. Suranarayan from Vivekananda College, from whom I've learned a lot, and he's going to deliver a lecture on fungal endophytes of uh, marine plants. He has been working on endophytic fungi from marine environment for more than 25 years, starting from mangroves, then uh, sea grasses, then algae, and, and we are going to listen to him with all his expertise. And then uh, Mark Caliban has joined uh, uh, Dr. Hyde group, and he has been associated with uh, Professor Garrett Jones, who have uh, uh, opened a marine fungal uh, online website for marine fungi. And he's going to uh, tell us about the uh, database uh, that has been maintained. And uh, uh, thrust we have eminent uh, scientists like uh, Dr. Raghu Kumar, but after his retirement, not, not many takers are there. And uh, Varda is, uh, uh, has been doing a lot of work on thrust And this afternoon, we have a lecture by uh, Dr. Varda Samir. And then uh, mangrove yeasts are normally neglected. We don't uh, see uh, any discussion on mangrove yeast. Uh, 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 and then, uh, uh, but then they, uh, we have uh, a lecture by uh, Dr. Manjusha. Uh, so that uh, uh, one is not missing from our discussions anymore. And then uh, we have uh, Dr. Patricia from Mexico, who is going to talk about uh, the diversity ecological roles and their utilization uh, from deep sea marine fungi. And the culminating lecture is by Dr. Samir, the Maria of uh, Neva Goa, who is going to talk more about diversity, culture, and application of uh, deep sea fungi. Uh, by virtue of uh, having the uh, facilities to go offshore uh, with uh, uh, cruises and vessels, uh, Neva uh, Goa is uh, well equipped to study the deep sea fungi. And uh, it will be wonderful to listen to uh, Dr. Uh, Samir Damare also. So with this uh, brief introduction about uh, this uh, marine fungi, as I said, we have three fourths of the ocean covered by water and uh, still uh, we are yet to understand the marine fungi. Uh, a lot more needs to be done. So my own strength is from uh, uh, the uh, taxonomic work, the morphology. So I'll uh, start with uh, those aspects and the numbers and other things, biodiversity, and then uh, uh, touch upon lightly about other aspects so that the uh, whole day sessions with the great eminent speakers will be uh, uh, getting uh, uh, informed about uh, the latest developments in their areas expertise. So I will start with my uh, presentation here. Can you see the slides, uh, please? Yes, 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 please. Go ahead, please. OK, thank you, thank you, thank you. Now, um, the definition for uh, marine fungi itself has been evolving. And uh, uh, Dr. Kohlmeyer, uh, he has defined uh, marine fungi as, and, as uh, obligate ones, uh, those that uh, grow and support it exclusively in a marine or a student habitat. That means you don't find them much in the terrestrial environments. And uh, the second group is faculty to marine fungi. And these are the ones which you find uh, normally in the freshwater or terrestrial milieus, but uh, they can also grow in the uh, marine environment. They can also sporulate. So basically, uh, for example, if you have mangrove plants, 
the aerial uh, uh, parts of the mangroves uh, are support the terrestrial species whereas the submerged ones are the uh, broken parts of these uh, mangroves or the fallen uh, twigs and other uh, woody litter they support the marine fungi because they are inundated in the uh, marine waters and uh, basically marine fungi are not a, a, a taxonomical group as you will be seeing uh, in the uh, lecture uh, uh, but mostly they are an ecologically and physiologically defined group Uh, the definition has been changed by uh, Pang et al. in 2016, uh, and they have broadened the scope of uh, marine fungi. Uh, for example, any fungus that is recoverable repeatedly from marine habitats uh, due to its ability to grow and uh, sporulate on substrate and marine environments, or formation of symbiotic relationship with other marine organisms, or its ability to adapt and evolve at the genetic level, or uh, be metabolically active in marine ones. The key word here is uh, recoverable repeatedly in the marine environment. That means if you uh, repeatedly encounter a particular fungus, then it is uh, considered as marine fungus. So where do we get this marine fungi? Uh, driftwood, mangroves, allophytic or salt, marsh plants, dead corals and animal skeletons, algae and sand grains. Now, in a, such a big uh, uh, marine environment, most of the fungi, marine fungi, have been encountered in the coastal environments uh, where you have these mangroves, the sea grasses, and of course, uh, the drifting wood which reaches the coast. Otherwise, we have various other uh, substrata, uh, dead organic matter, uh, the garbage, or the, uh, of course, coral reefs support a little bit, but uh, the algae, uh, vertebrates, invertebrates, the day, their data are going matter. When it reaches the seabed, uh, you find these uh, saprophytic organisms uh, in the deep sea conditions. There are a number of uh, substrate of marine fungi, like uh, wood, uh, sediments, uh, algae, seaweeds, dead corals. This is to broaden the uh, scope of the uh, sources or uh, uh, substrate of marine fungi. You have decaying leaves, but uh, very few marine fungi occur on them. Uh, I'll show you the other uh, substrata. So this is one more slide to show you that the detritus organisms, as one of the components of detritus organisms, the fungi, uh, as a separative fungi, degrade all the dead organic matter of this uh, phytoplankton, uh, the other uh, uh, animals and other things. But otherwise, you find uh, more diversity in the coastal habitats like uh, mangroves, and the sea grasses. Techniques, uh, initially people were uh, bringing the soil and uh, water samples to retrieve the marine fungi. And uh, to their surprise, most of the fungi uh, recovered were this uh, aspergillus and uh, penicillium species. Uh, but then uh, the direct examination method where you use a, a stereo zoom microscope uh, uh, um, the twigs or any, any other woody material, they are observed under this stereo zoom microscope to pick up the, to locate the fruit bodies and pick up them and then process them for uh, marine fungi on the slides. And uh, you find beautiful uh, uh, ascomycetes like this with a lot of appendages and miscellaneous. So this has been standardized over a period of time. And uh, the, the, the second technique that is uh, culturing in uh, bringing the soils and the water has been uh, to some extent uh, uh, not given importance because we are getting more and more diversity from this direct examination using a stereo zoom microscope. So if you find, as I already explained, in any uh, twig or any substratum or substrate uh, which is inundated in the marine uh, waters, you will find this obligate marine fungi, whereas those uh, you find on the aerial parts you may get a facultative. When they fall also, they can survive, and hence uh, we can still call them as uh, uh, facultative marine fungi. And marine derived fungi are the ones which uh, you isolate normally from the soils, the water, or the leaves uh, aerially uh, occurring in the marine environment. So normally we bring the um, twigs or uh, the prop roots of uh, these uh, mangroves or uh, driftwood, uh, any of those uh, plant uh, uh, material which is uh, at its advanced stage of decomposition. 
and uh, when you observe under microscope or even when you have uh, 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 with your naked eye you can see this uh, kind of fru uh, fruit bodies on the twig or the sample and uh, these are the different samples of uh, different sizes you can bring and then uh, incubate them in moist chambers um, and then examine under stereogen microscope uh, with the help of the stereogen microscope you can uh, locate the fruit bodies and then uh, once you locate the fruit bodies you can pin uh, put a pin so that uh, in future you need not uh, search again where exactly those fruit bodies are there and then with the help of compound microscope that is after preparing a micro slide you can observe those uh, uh, structures of the uh, marine fungi and then if we have a DAC microscope you will get uh, wonderful pictures uh, exposing the sheaths uh, miscellaneous sheaths and uh, uh, beautiful appendages of this marine fungi and one can also isolate uh, the uh, marine fungi with a single spore uh, technique uh, and then uh, you will find this germination of the ascospores with uh, this kind of uh, high folding uh, hyphae and uh, you can uh, store them after uh, identifying the purity of the uh, isolation and then you can take it up for further processing including molecular analysis or any uh, biotechnological applications uh, in the past uh, uh, exclusively the microscopic examination was alone considered for identification of marine fungi but uh, after uh, year 2000 um, the practice of uh, uh, sequencing the um, partial uh, uh, genome has started and uh, initially ITS uh, was considered as the uh, universal barcode of course LSU uh, large subunit and a small subunit but then uh, for nowadays for any new species uh, they are insisting for multi-gene analysis, including uh, protein coding genes also. Um, so the molecular sequencing has helped uh, to, the to a lot, uh, um, to a larger extent in the sense that, uh, number one, it uh, um, supports the claim for a new species. Number two, it's a position in the classification. Uh, those aspects are there with this uh, marine fungi. Now, of course, one more uh, advantage with the marine fungi is that they also help us in connecting the anamorph and the teleomorph. Uh, uh, after this uh, one fungus, one name has come into mainstay, uh, the molecular uh, sequencing studies are helping a lot for that. Now, in addition to this uh, culturing of the marine fungi, by bringing the soil samples or the uh, water samples and also the direct examination method. So, uh, one more, uh, this uh, just now I mentioned about the uh, molecular uh, sequencing studies. Uh, culture independent studies uh, have been started uh, without the necessity for culture, and uh, we are getting a lot of information from uh, those studies also. Uh, for example, uh, the oceanic system, the um, uh, mid sea or high seas, uh, surface waters. They are highly diluted and uh, um, people like the Richards, they say that uh, very low diversities of marine fungi is there in the uh, for surface waters. And uh, uh, and also we are getting uh, novel uh, um, uh, hits in the um, sequencing, like uh, dark matter fungi and all. So these uh, culture independent studies are helping a lot. And we are going to listen to uh, Dr. Samir uh, from these three studies, how these uh, culture independent studies are going to help us to understand the marine fungi. Uh, of course, um, a great many um, geosporic fungi and uh, other groups have been identified from these uh, culture independent studies. Uh, and they belong to Blastocladium mycota, mycota, Hytido mycota, Crypto mycota, Neocalisto mycota, etc. So I'm, I'm not going uh, deep into this because uh, Dr. Samir, who is an expert on deep sea studies, is, he will explain uh, a lot of it. So marine fungi constitute only meager 1% of described fungal species and are still poorly characterized as per uh, Jones 2011. You know, more than 150,000 uh, uh, fungi are known. And uh, uh, as far as uh, marine environment is concerned, we have very low uh, numbers. This number is uh, slowly increasing and uh, uh, in future we may find more and more. So what is special about uh, marine fungi? You know, uh, in such a big uh, environment, uh, a drift to, drift to it, a small twig or a log drifting in seawater is a very uh, uh, rare chance. So these fungi, if they have to adapt, uh, 
to catch those uh, substrata, which is very rare occurrence, they have to have special adaptations. And accordingly, many of these marine fungi have uh, broad mucilaginous different types of mucilaginous and uh, different types of appendage. Uh, you will appreciate that um, many uh, marine fungi have beautiful appendages and uh, sheaths, and they are basically to help them to attach to the surfaces of these substrata, uh, whether it be driftwood or mangrove wood, because as I said, it's a rare occurrence and they have to catch them and then uh, survive and grow on them. So most of the uh, marine fungi are saprobic in uh, mode of their mode of life. And uh, marine fungi are implicated in biodeterioration of boats and uh, ships, uh, particularly if they are untreated with any paints or other uh, things. Uh, you will find marine fungal infestation and uh, they are also um, the main role is uh, uh, decomposition of the dead organic matter particularly in the mangrove and the shoreline environments uh, as far as the number and diversity of marine fungi is concerned uh, for the past uh, 100 years from 80 1890s or around that up to 1979 uh, only 209 uh, marine fungi belong to 106 uh, genera were reported uh, but then by 1991 a decadal increase of 121 species and by 2444 marine fungi have been reported and in 2009 530 uh, marine fungal species belonging to 321 genera have been reported but after the revision of the uh, definition of uh, uh, what is a marine fungus where we have uh, means uh, it has been included that uh, those fungi that repeatedly occur in many marine environments can also be considered as marine. The number shot to 1,100, and now it stands at uh, almost 1,900 fun uh, fungal species belonging to 767 uh, uh, genera. You will uh, uh, appreciate that 90% uh, of this marine fungi belong to this group called Ascomycota, including 130 east. So, um, the marine fungi growing on those uh, twigs, you don't have much room for uh, uh, big uh, basidomous fruit bodies to grow because of the turbulence, the wavy action of the waters, uh, seawater, and uh, 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 lack of uh, proper uh, anchorage. Uh, the bigger basidomous are not found. A few uh, small, tiny, microscopic basidomous uh, are still found in the marine environment, but uh, by and large, uh, the marine fungi are dominated by Ascomycota, more than 90%. Of course, uh, lower fungi, you'll find uh, Chytidomycota, Zygomycota, and Blastopodon. So this is the latest uh, 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 on uh, the number of uh, marine fungi. You can see that uh, they are not taxonomically uniform because uh, they belong to 273 families, 107 orders, and 33 classes so they are very diverse taxonomically uh, but ecologically they are a common group with uh, similar requirements of salt or uh, whatever it is um, and as i said uh, if you still concentrate on only on this obligate marine fungi uh, they are somewhere around uh, 700 or 800 and the faculty to marine fungi is 550 and more and more aspergillus penicillium are uh, added and uh, hence uh, the uh, the obligate marine fungi, uh, almost half of uh, the 1,800 or 900 marine fungi. Um, Professor Gary Jones, uh, uh, he is uh, he's been very active researcher, uh, and he's maintaining a website on uh, these marine fungi, and uh, you'll find more details uh, when uh, Dr. Uh, Mark Caliban present about this website. Uh, basically, you'll find uh, all the new species posted there. Uh, details about the new species. Um, the uh, classification of these organisms has been evolving. Uh, many of the uh, lower fungi, which were earlier included under fungi, are no longer there. They are separated, like this uh, prolegnum is uh, Paranosporomyster, and uh, some of these uh, uh, Australian and uh, Mixocastridia, Dictostelia. So um, you will find another. Uh, uh, a group called staminopiles to which uh, these lower fungi have been placed uh, but we still discuss uh, them as uh, uh, fungi and fungi like organisms so they are fungi like uh, earlier we used to study under botany 
uh, they are no longer uh, uh, grouped under botany because these are the u mycota true mycota these are u mycota u mycetes so the, these uh, groups the hypomycetes and hypocabidomyces and labyrinthomyces they are placed under this kingdom staminopyla which uh, dr vardha samaran may touch uh, so she will give more details about that i think so if you see among the different groups of uh, the fungi we have a very large uh, diversity of fungi belonging to these two groups ascomycota and mycota, uh, which are also called as dicaria because the two nuclei uh, are present uh, for a long period of time in these two groups of fungi so these are the lower fungi without uh, much uh, uh, network of hyphae uh, which is uh, uh, sinocytic in condition the hyphae are sinocytic and not uh, 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 septic Whereas uh, the ascomyces and bacillomyces, you'll find the septate hyphae, and uh, there are different groups of uh, uh, the ascomyces with the fruit bodies uh, like uh, rounded uh, spherical structure, enclosed, uh, which you used to call them as clistothecia, these are perithecia, apothecia, and uh, pseudothecia, the dothidiomyces. As far as habitats and uh, substrata for uh, marine fungi are concerned, as I already mentioned, driftwood has been one of the uh, earliest. Uh, that has been uh, uh, found for uh, marine fungi uh, because uh, people were uh, examining under the microscope, uh, the stereogen microscope, uh, direct examination method, and uh, they found uh, many interesting fungi, particularly uh, belong to the uh, a particular order called uh, Halosperials. So these are the driftwoods one can bring and examine. Uh, you will find these kind of beautiful appendages, appendaged uh, uh, marine fungi. Uh, mostly halosperials from this uh, driftwood. Um, of course, uh, some of them are also found in uh, mangrove environment also with uh, this kind of uh, appendages, but not to the but not to the extent of that uh, driftwood where you will find uh, different types of those appendages. Uh, but in marine uh, means uh, mangrove environment also we are encountering lot of uh, these halosperials and uh, other groups of uh, fungi that have these appendages. So mangrove substrata. Initially, Colmer uh, opined that uh, mangroves are not so uh, diverse for uh, marine fungi, but uh, later on, uh, studies from Dr. Hyde and then uh, other groups from Southeast Asia, India, uh, have proved that uh, mangroves uh, support a large number of marine fungi, and in fact, they have higher diversity than driftwood. And one advantage with mangrove, uh, mangroves is that you can identify the host, whereas in driftwood, uh, it is unknown host. So mangroves you find in the tropical belt uh, along the uh, entire uh, globe, uh, uh, but uh, some of these uh, mangrove uh, uh, tracts have been already uh, investigated for marine fungi, particularly the Southeast Asia, but then even Southeast Asia, Indonesia, which is having largest uh, uh, belt of uh, mangroves and also the Sundarbans are yet to be fully explored for marine fungi. So you'll find these uh, mangrove plants either on the edge of this, uh, uh, the, means on the banks, means uh, uh, near the sea, uh, or mostly they are interior uh, with the backwaters, uh, different creeks and channels. So these are the different uh, woody pieces one can collect. Pneumatophores uh, I have examined, uh, it doesn't uh, support much uh, fungal diversity, means marine fungal diversity, or the seedlings also, uh, few uh, fungi are, uh, reported from the seedlings and my own experience also tells that whereas the wood is very good and these prop roots uh, by virtue of uh, getting uh, uh, stuck onto the uh, tree uh, rajafora and then uh, exposing to these marine waters during this uh, low tide you can pluck them if they are at the advanced stage of decomposition you can easily pluck them and examine you will get a lot of diversity and uh, almost uh, more than 201 fungi have been reported when i reviewed this marine fungi and riser for her. Also, the equally uh, diverse and supporting large number of uh, marine fungi is this Avicinia species, uh, Avicinia officinalis or Avicinia marina. Again, more than 200 marine fungi have been reported from the Avicinia host. In addition to these two, uh, a mangrove palm, Nipa fruticans, also supports a large number of marine fungi. Uh, but it is not uh, uh, available or doesn't occur in many parts of the mangroves. 
in india it occurs in andaman islands um, but in other parts of the globe uh, in some areas uh, it is quite common like uh, in brunei and uh, when we reviewed uh, uh, the marine fungi occurring in uh, the uh, mangroves we found almost uh, 856 uh, marine uh, fungal taxa reported with uh, again uh, ascomycetes dominating 773 ascomycetes uh, more fungi have been reported from the pacific uh, ocean uh, followed by indian ocean and then the atlantic ocean in, uh, in addition to the driftwood and the uh, mangroves one more uh, uh, the host plant is this uh, the plants are the salt marsh plants um, Colmere has spent a lot of time examining the materials of uh, the substrates of Juncus rumerianus, and he reported more than 100 fungi uh, from these uh, uh, Juncus rumerianus, a salt mushroom. So you have again uh, uh, the salt marsh plants also dominated by ascomycetes, and uh, you can see uh, Juncus more than 135 fungi, uh, Phragmites 100 fungi, and Spartina another 125 fungi. Altogether, they can. You can say that around 350 fungi are there in the salt marsh plants. Uh, Caliban et al. has published this in Journal of Fungi. I want, I'm just showing you how uh, these the three um, substrates, like the driftwood, mangrove wood, uh, and these salt marsh plants dominate and uh, provide us a large diversity of marine fungi. Uh, if you see the diversity uh, uh, in terms of orders or uh, uh, small classes, you have uh, earlier we used to say that the unit unicate ascomycetes. Now we have this class sodariumycetes. Uh, within that, we have the uh, clistocecial fungi with uh, without a neck. These fungi are there, and you'll find the ascospores like this, uh, Geophilia species, and then uh, hypocreals, uh, which are known to produce a lot of secondary metabolites. Very few representatives are there uh, in marine environment, like this uh, Calichromatetes. And then a uh, lot of this xylerial fungi, which have a uh, germ slit in the ascospores, and also they have uh, apical ring, which blues uh, in iodine, uh, so iodine reaction. Uh, these are these the fruit bodies of these uh, xylerials. You can find them uh, on the surface or uh, deeply seated inside the wood. So, so anthostomilla are immersed fruit bodies. They have immersed fruit bodies. In addition to the, the amphisphere, you see, uh, which uh, has both iodine positive and negative, are also present. Like uh, these are these uh, fungi, like Ronticola, tunicularis, they occur on the uh, Nipah fruticans. And Nipah fruticans, we have a large number of other fungi belonging to xylerians. Uh, you have Oxidatis nipe with this. Uh, uh, bluing reaction to the apical ring, bluing to the uh, iodine. So this presence of uh, uh, an apical ring is also a taxonomic criterion, whether the ring is apical or subapical, whether it's bluing or not, they are all uh, criteria used for the identification of uh, the fungi. Dietary pills, uh, mostly they have uh, allantoid fungi like this allantoid fungi and they are deeply seated inside the twigs or the uh, woody materials and uh, some um, polysporous uh, as say containing uh, uh, forms are also there like this uh, crypto valsa uh, halus arcicola hypto valsa uh, avicennia are there and uh, diaporthelis uh, basically the uh, pedicel is short here and they are early deliquescent uh, there are many representatives of diaporthelis that we have um, the pedemic spore rhizo for is now found to be belong to diet tripales. So other unitary fungi, you have long filiform uh, asco spores, largely you find in the uh, uh, palm, like uh, nipa. This is uh, Marina spora mangrovi, uh, some other fungi like uh, Malaysia, Marina spora with the uh, uh, distoceptive condition. And uh, several Pachispora, you have the middle cells dark and end cells uh, hyaline, and some of them having a, a sheath also are present. And this has been, this uh, several has been raised to uh, subclass level several uh, mycetidae. 
and then uh, you have uh, uh, two support condition also and uh, one more this filiform mascul uh, spores with the end caps uh, are present in lalvertia mycetidae another subclass and uh, as i already mentioned halosperials is the order with more than 140 species uh, mostly they have beautiful appendages and some of them also have this kind of uh, apical rings uh, which indicates active dispersal of the ascospores they have uh, these uh, hamate uh, appendages uh, at the both poles or polar regions or a single pole and that means only on one side you will find a cap like appendage uh, this is reported from mandovi river it is for a mandovi river or they have both sides appendages and these appendages when you put in a, a water mount they unfold into long thread like structures otherwise uh, in the fresh material uh, you find this kind of beautiful appendages of this uh, halosophia ratnagirinsis it, it was reported from ratnagiri uh, by bd bose so this kind of apical ring indicates the uh, active dispersal of the ascospores now, Dothidiomycetes, uh, you find more in the mangrove environment than in the driftwood. So all this kind of different types of uh, ascospores, you find more often in the mangrove uh, substrata than the driftwood. So they are they have very often this uh, sheath. It is not so clear, but uh, they have a sheath, miscellaneous sheath. Uh, you have uh, Phragmosporous spores and uh, muriform ascospores like this a huge uh, uh, these are all very big uh, ascospores that you find and many of these fruit bodies are deeply seated inside the twig unless you take a section you cannot see this uh, uh, ascospores and assay inside the uh, twig how they are arranged and many of them have both a uh, miscellaneous sheath and also an apical appendage type of thing and uh, um, since both the dothriomyces are bituitant fungi they have uh, uh, what you call as a fissy tunicate mechanism in the dispersal of ascospores. The outer uh, tunica or the mem membrane is pushed by the inner membrane and then the dispersal of these ascospores occurs. So even now uh, uh, we are getting a lot of new fungi uh, from our own group. Uh, we found this from the Dothidiomyces uh, four different new genera. One is this uh, Thyridariella. Uh, with the two new species, mangrove and uh, one more, Mahakoshe, and then uh, uh, one more uh, uh, pseudo astrosphere elopsis from the river Kaveri. We have uh, Vitaliana mangrove, uh, another new genus in honor of uh, Professor BPR Vittal. Uh, this has been raised, and uh, also in honor of Ragukumar, uh, Dr. Ragukumar, we have raised one more new genus, Ragukumaria keshafale. So as I said, the basidiomycetes, you don't have scope for large fruit bodies of basidiomycetes in the drifting waters or means driftwood or uh, ices. But uh, in the aerial parts of the mangroves, you may find uh, fruit bodies, bigger ones. But uh, in the twigs, as far as the twigs are concerned, in the inundated portions of the uh, twigs, I uh, means fallen uh, uh, twigs, are, you'll find very microscopic uh, fruit bodies of these basidiomycetes. Uh, you can, you, in fact, you often require stereogeom uh, microscope to examine them pick up and then uh, prepare a slide uh, you can uh, uh, expose the basidial spores uh, and then uh, this is another uh, form of basidiomycete again if on the tw twig you can see in the almost in the twig color this uh, calatella mangrovi uh, with uh, this basidia and uh, basidial spores and uh, nowadays we don't use this uh, uh, Deuteron mycotina because uh, the anamorphic uh, fungi or asexual fungi have been merged with uh, uh, sexual states or uh, one fungus, one name. But then, still, uh, if you uh, carefully see, these uh, uh, hyphomycetes have somewhat uh, twisted and a long uh, uh, thing, uh, what do you call uh, hyphal structures as uh, extended portions of the uh, conidia, which again help them to catch the surfaces. The main idea is to. Uh, catch the uh, surface of the twig or whatever chance occurrence and uh, you'll find uh, these uh, 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 anamorphic fungi also uh, using uh, those uh, or adapting uh, their structures in such a way that they can catch hold of the substrates. 
So you'll find uh, the different types of uh, trichocladials and other uh, species. This is Hydea pygmy. Once again, uh, it has uh, this kind of uh, uh, dark spot structure. Now, the dark spot structures helps them to escape from the desiccation, the solar radiation, etc. Because many of them also uh, get exposed in the, during low tide. Uh, so this kind of melanization helps them to escape from desiccation and uh, solar radiation. Now, as far as uh, uh, marine fungi are concerned, uh, there have been uh, keys produced for the identification of marine fungi, uh, Colmere and Colmere 91, uh, Hyde and Sherma in 2000. Uh, but um, ours is uh, almost uh, outdated because we provided for 444 and Jones et al. has provided for 530. And uh, you, you can see that from 2009 to 2023, Almost 14 years have passed and a lot of uh, new fungi have been described. And this is an area where uh, somebody has to contribute for a new key to identify the uh, marine fungi. It, it has to be updated. And these are the books uh, published for uh, marine fungi. Uh, Jones uh, uh, and Pang have published uh, in 2019 marine fungi and fungus like organisms. Uh, uh, Raghu Kumar published fungi in coastal and uh, oceanic marine system. Some of the older ones are also mentioned here. Now, what is the role of uh, marine fungi in the environment? You know, they play an important role in the production of organic detritus. Uh, uh, they help in the nutrient regeneration cycles by as a decomposer organisms by degrading the dead and decaying organic matter. And uh, as far as the open sea is concerned, you don't have uh, anchorage for these filamentous fungi. And uh, more dominance of yeasts and prostochytes can be found in the high seas or open sea water. And uh, the diversity of filamentous fungi, by and large, is low in the high seas. But uh, in the depth of the sea, uh, deep sea, you may find a lot of this uh, saprophytic uh, filamentous fungi with uh, adaptations uh, in the uh, near the in, the in the seabed biodegradation any untreated uh, wood or uh, um, boat or ship you will find the infestation of this marine fungi and over a period of time they can be uh, thoroughly uh, degraded uh, but that means uh, they require uh, treat treatment with the paints or whatever it is uh, as far as the biotechnological potential is concerned, um, the you know that uh, these lignocellulosic uh, enzymes are um, broadly produced by deciduomycetes, particularly the white rat fungi, which produce the lacases, lignin degrading uh, peroxidases, and manganese dependent uh, peroxidases, etc. But interestingly, some of these marine ascomycetes fungi also have been shown to be producing the lignin degraded enzymes, but of course, mostly dominated by lacases. And uh, uh, some of these uh, uh, enzymes, lignin degrading enzymes, have been implicated in decolorization of uh, 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 dyes, different kinds of dyes used in the paper industry or uh, uh, textile industry, etc. And some studies have shown that, uh, uh, particularly Raukumar et al., uh, 1996-1999, they have shown that uh, the marine isolates can degrade the uh, paper mill effluents or the uh, uh, dye decolorization of any of the uh, pollutants, colored uh, colored pollutants. And uh, <clears throat> in fact, they have also shown that they can decolorize the molasses paint wash. Um, and some of them have uh, xylene is alkaline, uh, uh, means a cellulose free alkaline xylene is activity because in paper industry, uh, you should not uh, uh, get uh, this uh, cellulose because we are interested in cellulose in the paper industry. So if any xylenase is produced, that would be useful for uh, decolorizing the uh, pulp, which will have a lot of hemicellulose. Uh, so some of these uh, studies have shown that very few studies, uh, they have xylenase activity also. Um, there are many various other enzymes have been reported, but a uh, lot more needs to be uh, studied in this area. As far as bioactive compounds are concerned, most of the bioactive compounds reported are from the marine derived fungi. The ones uh, which I mentioned earlier, the Aspergillus penicillium isolates, which are encountered in the marine environments, they are the ones which are showing a lot of uh, uh, these bioactive compounds. But whereas uh, uh, such efforts on uh, typical or obligate marine fungi are wanting, there are there will be some studies, but uh, that they are not enough. 
the main reason is that isolation of uh, this isolation and maintenance of obligate marine fungi is somewhat a tedious task because isolation itself is a big problem and once you isolate maintaining them is a big problem because after a few uh, subculturing you may lose it or they are easily prone for uh, uh, cross contaminations and this uh, slide shows the decadal uh, increase or uh, at various points of time or uh, year wise the number of secondary metabolites uh, uh, fungi from marine habitats uh, but whatever may be the case uh, we are going to listen to the next lecture from Dr. Narsim Thakur, he is going to enlighten us more about these secondary metabolites from marine fungi. Uh, it is suffice to say that uh, though we have found in the typical marine fungi, very few have been reported from the uh, obligate marine fungi. Uh, one of the reasons uh, that has been uh, means uh, some reports suggest that many fungi have not uh, be, uh, uh, gone to the market uh, level or uh, uh, the um, usage level. Uh, the re main reasons are that the non-comprehensive screening approaches and lack of sustained lead optimization. Normally they report and then leave it at it, not taking it to the next levels. So that is one of the uh, drawbacks in this uh, research on uh, secondary metabolites. Endophytic fungi, like in all other uh, environments like terrestrial environment, where we have uh, the classic example of a taxol, uh, produced by taxes failure. There are uh, expected uh, expectations that uh, we may get a uh, lot of secondary metabolites from uh, and marine environment also, like mangroves, sea grasses, uh, and algae. Uh, and uh, this uh, today we are going to uh, listen to Dr. Surinaran, uh, who is an expert on endophytic fungi. He has done both on the diversity and also the biotechnology applications, enzymatic studies and the secondary metabolites. So he will, he will enlighten us more about the endophytic fungi. So the polyunsaturated fatty acids uh, and the DHA are uh, produced by thrastokytes. Uh, you know the value of uh, DHA. Um, and uh, we are going to listen to this particular aspect uh, from uh, Dr. Varga uh, Damar. Some uh, um, uh, diseases are also found. You find uh, very rarely any plant disease in mangroves. Uh, plant diseases are uh, very less. And also the animal diseases, particularly in the fish uh, aquaculture and shellfish culturing, some of these lower fungi uh, are the ones which cause the, those diseases. Uh, Legionidium, Halithrus, Halacrestidia, Atkinsonella, etc. So these are the pioneering marine mycologists, uh, uh, Dr. Willy Hong, Sparrow, John Colmeyer, uh, and uh, uh, Samuels. Uh, these people are no longer there. Uh, Professor Gareth Jones is actively working and uh, contributing a lot to marine mycology. Professor Hyde is from Thailand. He is also, he initially started with uh, marine fungi and uh, shifted to terrestrial fungi, but his heart is still with the marine fungi. He is contributing a lot on marine fungi. And uh, among the present uh, uh, marine mycologists, we have Dr. Abdul Wahab from Egypt, Dr. Sally Freyer from Australia, Dr. Prang from Taiwan and uh, Dr. Alison Walker from Canada, Monica from Sri Lanka and Caliban from Philippines. From India, Dr. Rahul Kumar started the marine fungal studies in 1960s and 70s. Uh, and then he shifted out to the prostrogates, which, which are also uh, fungi-like organisms. Um, Dr. Chandra Tharu Kumar has been working on physiology and biotechnology aspects of uh, marine fungi. Professor BPR Vittel, he has been working on marine fungi from east coast of India, under whom I did my PhD. Um, and uh, Professor Sridhar, he has been working a lot on marine fungi from the west coast of India. Uh, Dr. Bose from west coast of India and Dr. Manimohan from Kerala coast. And Dr. Suranarayan, as I said, uh, he has studied uh, uh, physiology of marine fungi and also endophyte. Dr. Kali Selvam is working on uh, the applications of marine fungi from Anamala University and myself from Pondicherry University. I'm continuing, um, I have my continued interest on marine fungi. And the, among the present uh, mycologists, we have Dr. Ravindran, Dr. Samar, uh, Samir Damari, uh, Dr. Damodar Shanai, uh, Dr. Catherine, all from NIO Goa and uh, Varda from Goa University and Devatata recently joined uh, MTCC uh, in Tech Chandigarh. And future work to be done is uh, isolation of marine fungi 
uh, is an uh, aspect which has to be considered because uh, many people were still going only for morphology just uh, taking pictures but uh, isolations are very important and out of 1900 marine fungi uh, a few hundreds are uh, in the available in the culture collections we need more such efforts to isolate the uh, marine fungal cultures and uh, there is no no <laughs> exclusive marine fungal culture collection uh, um, and uh, if uh, someone starts where it would be very nice and uh, large tracts of mangroves in africa indonesia sundarbans and many other countries have to be explored for marine fungi what I'm trying to say is the biodiversity studies itself uh, are pending in uh, many uh, pockets uh, the, in, of the globe. Uh, more marine fungi should be taken up for screening for various activities, including bioactive compounds and enzymes. Uh, marine mycologists are dwindling and uh, because uh, the interest is uh, reducing, but it needs to be changed. Uh, and hence, the future marine mycologists need to be trained. Uh, I thank my PhD guide, late Professor B. P. R. Vittal, for introducing me into marine mycology and his encouragement. I also did my postdoc, first postdoc with Professor Raghu Kumar, uh, and I learned a lot. And second postdoc with the Professor K.D. Hyde in Hong Kong when he was in Hong Kong, and uh, learned a lot from him. And uh, some of the pictures shown in the present uh, uh, presentation are uh, from our MOS project where uh, Devadatta was working as well. Uh, I have li liberally used some of the publications data from uh, Garrett Jones and his uh, group and also Professor Hyde group. I, I am thankful to them. Thank you, Anandal. Um, thank you, Professor Sarmagaro. I hope I'm audible to you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, I mean, that was a wonderful talk and they were very classic beginning for our uh, you know international online seminar on marine fungi if if you permit uh, can i let uh, dr thakur to talk now and you could have the question and answer at the end of uh, thakur's presentation that's fine that's fine that's fine because um, the time management is more important because uh, audience uh, we can go yes, yes. through question answers of dr sarma it might take 15 more minutes better we start with your no problem no problem Please go. Okay, thank, thank you. Uh, uh, as uh, Dr. Thakur advises, we will go with the question and answers uh, session for Dr. Sarma Garu. Uh, anybody has any questions, please raise your hand. Uh, I mean, raise your hand, not literally. Uh, use the button, raise hand. That's the last third. Last. Uh, okay, Dr. Mohan Kumar, please. Sarma Garu, you could stop presenting. Yeah. Yeah, one minute. Okay, Sachin Rajput, you can ask your question. Okay, I think I need to un unmute people. Okay, Mohan Kumar, please. Uh, sir, uh, if I have isolate uh, my uh, marine fungi, and if I need to culture in lab, do I need uh, uh, seawater? 50% uh, seawater is ideal. Either seawater or uh, sodium chloride. Or can we just uh, filter, uh, filter, sterilize that uh, seawater and use it for later purpose? Is yes, it yes, possible? Yes. Like, yeah, yes, yes. You have to filter and then uh, sterilize it. Fifty percent. Better. Okay. And last question. Yeah, last question. Uh, can I uh, substitute seawater with uh, river water? No, no, no. So sodium chloride. You can substitute with sodium chloride instead of three point four percent. You put one point seven percent sodium chloride. Uh, you can use river water, but 1.7% of uh, sodium chloride you have to use. Yeah, thank you very much, sir. Nice presentation. Thank you. Thank you. Dr. Mohan, I have, Dr. Sir, Mohan. I have a question. Yes, sir. Uh, thank you. Uh, so this is regarding uh, isolation of uh, symbiotic fungi. Have you come across any such fungi in the marine uh, sources? Uh, for example, uh, association with an algae or association with any any sea animals or anything. No, we have some of these lichens, marine lichens. Uh, not much is uh, being uh, done on these marine lichens, but uh, we have marine lichens, uh, and uh, some diseases are caused by uh, fungi. But uh, symbiotic means um, not much uh, symbiosis. Of course, the endophytic fungi are there, but again. 
you find on the leaves aerially uh, the symbiosis not with and, like uh, corals or any other uh, kind of sea animals no 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 but uh, you have this uh, uh, vam fungi growing in mangroves um, so they are uh, once again uh, a kind of symbiotic uh, association they have with the host plants so um, dr surinaran is going to talk about symbiotic fungi okay thank you sir thank you okay any more questions Okay, thank you very much, Professor Sarmagar. Uh, I request you to stay back till the end and listen to all the talks and uh, give us guidance at the end of the talks, uh, seminars. Okay, thank you very much. I I, I take this opportunity to thank the Mycoasia for giving me this opportunity. Though I, I, I am a coordinator, most of the work has been done by Dr. Damodar Shenai, uh, and uh, <laughs> I'm getting the credit, but he has done and he is the um, uh, main, main person behind this uh, seminar, international seminar. Thank you, Dr. Shalanai, and also thank you for patient listening, for your uh, appreciation and engagement. Thank you. Uh, thank you, uh, thank you, Professor Sharma Garu. Uh, over to you, Rohit Sharma, for a summary and the over, uh, word of thanks. Are you there, Sam Rohit? Yeah, 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 yeah. Thank you, Dr. Shalanai. Uh, thank you, uh, Dr. Sharma, for a very informative talk. It was excellent. I think you introduced. Uh, the sub topic to us uh, as well as brief the about the seminar uh, the next uh, talk is by professor nursing thakur uh, dr thakur is a prominent marine biologist at uh, csir national institute of oceanography goa uh, leading the chemical oceanographic division and teaching at uh, academic uh, that is acsir school of oceanography Born in Maharashtra, he studied at Mumbai University and initiated his research at CSIR and I.O. Uh, his PhD in marine chemical ecology and bioprospecting from Go 